Hello and welcome to this little bit of fun. You know, how many times have you been watching amazing food content online, places like Netflix, and thought, wow, I want to taste that? Yeah, essentially we are now licking the screen. From their screens to our table, we've got Netflix bites. Netflix, show us what you've got. Also, yeah, we've bought our own cloche from London, that's what you do. Standard practice, because we don't know what's going to appear under here. We've been given cue cards with some information on, but basically each one is a signature dish by an amazing chef or mixologist who has created something on Netflix that we're now able to see. Finally, a proper chef. Number one, Baz, lift the cloche. What? We have... Pudding? A cocktail no. and or dessert. It looks like custard on top. It's giving off rhubarb and custard vibes. That is lovely. It's super tropical and it's that like sherbetty balance between sweet and sour and like tangy and ice cold. What is the top? Is it mango? It's, it's like a it's sherbetty, you're right. Well, it's got a tingle. And so is this little. Ooh, that's fun. I'm incredibly spicy and sour and salty and everything. As a drink to start everything, it's like it's it's woken me up. It's exciting. That plays with every part of your tongue. It's kind of the it's the cold, icy okay. cocktail that's also super exciting. Should we put ourselves out by misery? This is. Happy Little Accidents, a cocktail, tequila based, made by Kate Gerwin. It says here, Kate is here today. Cheers, this, cheers. This is delicious. What Thank am I you. drinking? It's incredible. It is a happy little accident. Yeah. Um, it is a split base of rum and tequila with uh, Li Hing Mui. Pardon? Yes. Li Hing Mui is a, a dried salted plum, and we like you make a powder out of it. So I use a powder and I use the infusion on the rum, mm -hmm. um, and then strain it out. So it adds like a really nice, um, almost like a pickled salty flavor yeah. that complements the sweetness of the guava and the passion fruit, kind of ties them all together. It's got almost that sherbet yeah. kind of vibe to it. Mm -hmm. So that is called electric dust. Sure is. Isn't it? Yeah, so have you ever um, experienced a Szechuan buzz button flower? Yes, mm. yes, amazing. Right. So it's, it's a yes, sensation it's more than it is a flavor. It is a, a sensation, flavor. it also is a flavor enhancer. So the cocktail will taste different as you Oh my God, it's, it drink. is, it's tingling, it's it constantly tingling. goes. Yeah. We have tried it, but never really been able to apply it in the same way, where this now makes sense. So the application, it, it kind of en enhances your flavor perceptions. Oh my God. Makes things super bright. I love it because it makes you salivate. Yes, like my it does. Mouth it is gets now you right full. here. It's so okay. Like, ha what brought you to the Netflix Bites kind of setup? Like, what? Why here? What have you been celebrating this summer? So I competed on Drink Masters, mm -hmm. which is uh, the first bartending competition reality show that has ever been done. Um, we have lots of different shows for cooking and things mm -hmm. like that. But but bartending is a little bit different. It's kind of hard to really capture drinks. Um, they they kind of die quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's not something that had yeah. ever been able to be accomplished and Netflix pulled it out of the, the bag of tricks and um, created a, a reality competition show for bartenders. We like to think of ourselves, like we work in the kitchen a lot, we spend a lot of time in the kitchen, um, we're using all of the same equipment, I can't even bartend without an induction burner yeah. in my life, I mean, um, we're doing infusions, we're working with flavors, obviously we're trying to layer flavors, create new experiences. Um, and what better place at Netflix Bites? And it generally is the first taste. As you sit down, you start with a welcome glass of bubbles or wine, or right. probably more likely a cocktail, because it's just more interesting, more exciting. And it's fun. Genuinely, okay. that is the most exciting Exciting cocktail. Is that a thing? Yes. It yeah, is. Absolutely. That is amazing. It's a thing. I'm going to take it. Thank you so much for that. That's absolutely, brilliant. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. What a great star. Unbelievable. If that's where we're starting, I can't wait for the food to follow. Oh my god, it's getting it's, it's, it's really tingling. It's getting, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's really going, it's going, it's going. It's going. Ah, Little bit of drool, you just ah, wipe it, it's ah. gonna be fine. No one will notice. Strong start. Now number two. Oh, okay. Golden brown fried. Pretty sure I know what it is. If I had to guess, I'd say like chicken, but I don't know until I've been into it. Yeah, nugs and mayo. <laughs> nugs and mayo and lemon, a lot big chunk of lemon. And they go with thigh meat. It's yeah, very, it's, it's so very succulent, succulent yeah. and delicious. The chicken is cooked to perfection, and it's a lot more zingy than I was expecting. And I think that's the lemon we've squeezed over. But I'm seeing sesame seeds in this, which, which kicks, kind of screams togarashi to me. So I'm going to go with karage. But it is. This is Japanese fried chicken. Oh, look at me, I'm a chef. By Andrew Zimmern. So Andrew was in the Iron Chef. 
in the quest for like oh, absolute the, iron um, legend. Um, one of the judges. Yes. Yes. And basically, of all time, like mm. chef, restaurateur, mm. food writer, judge, presenter. He's done loads of travel shows, and I feel like this is a wonderful nod to everything he stands for. The thing is, when you're a judge at Iron Chef, and you're at that table, and the food's poured to you, you're sitting there, and you've got the, the nerve to say, that's overcooked, that's too soggy. When you're bringing nugs to the table that are really simple, <laughs> <laughs> They've got to deliver, and they are they are brilliant. They're really good, and I think it is a coating on the kind of Japanese style of yeah. fried chicken. We have done a lot of fried chicken in our time, and yet we can't yeah, stop yeah. eating this. It's right. exactly that. It's so Moorish. It's the perfect start to a meal. It's quite literally a little bite mm. and a celebration of yeah, a top Netflix judge. I mean, when you watch Iron Chef, it is like energy oh. and stress and adrenaline at a whole another yeah. level compared to like our UK master yeah. chef. It's like up there. <laughs> to be a judge at that level, you've got to know your stuff. And Andrew has done so much over his years from writing and judging and presenting. Been a restaurateur himself, a chef for many years, super well traveled. It says here, loves to explore cultural acceptance through food. Okay, so that kind yeah. of fusion yeah, yeah. of food and travel, which I think is something that content content especially unlocks you'll also notice we've left three pieces of chicken because we're good people let's bring on number three <laughs> i know we were slightly restricted by baggage allowance but we could have done with a bigger cloche i think it might be a pizza it's yeah. a pizza it's a bit but it's a pizza like i've never seen before i can smell fermented chili tomato How could, that just smells to me like... It does, it does smell. Got you, Jack. Like, yeah. <laughs> Which it may oh, or may not be. It looks spicy. Lovely crust. Cheers. Mmm. It's a bit Ooh, tangy. Warm, it's warm. Tomato sauce. Yeah. And then, mm. a lot of spice. And it is that fermented spice that I would associate with... <laughs> it's kimchi or got you, Jack. There's something sweet there as well that's pulling it back. Sometimes fusion pieces take things a bit too far. But this is taking everything that's great about Korean gochujang kind of style food and paired it beautifully with an amazing piece of ice. This is a Lady Zaza pizza by Ann Kim. So I feel like Chef's Table completely redefined the way that food programming yeah, yeah. was shot. Like yeah. the cinematography was yeah. stunning. Yeah. Several series, and then they went in like deep dive on some, so barbecue. And this is Ann Kim from the pizza series. We were right, tomato sauce, ah, kimchi as opposed to gochujang, yep. you know, same, same part of the world, that fermented chili. Sakura pork, which it said is high welfare, high quality pork from Iowa. And then scallions, we can see those, and sesame, we can see those. So with Ann Kim, she's a chef who was from Minnesota, where they've got a very distinct pizza style. And she came in with her Korean influence and a bold move in the pizza world. She has four restaurants. Wow. in Minnesota, and she won the James Beard Award for Best Chef of the Midwest. What I love about this is you arc back to the beauty. I mean, we're currently in LA, and for me, that was the first time I had Korean fusion with ooh, Mexican ooh. food, which was the Kogi drug. Oh, you've made a mess. Ooh. This, a taste in LA, Netflix bites, but also with a Minnesota kind of mm. background, which is the Italian meets Korean fusion. Whenever I watch Chef's Table, as a normal, I look at it and it's, it's out of reach. They're a place that I can't go. And the fact you can come here and experience it now, it's just like, oh, it's brilliant. So it says here, Anne, uh, as a Korean immigrant, she attributes her love of cooking and her culinary palate to her mum and her grandma. So that's three generations of like female cooks yep. aspiring to just create amazing Korean food and probably each generation doing it in a slightly different yeah. way. And now Anne putting it on a pizza, among other things, just to kind of bring a taste of her culture to the masses in a very familiar format. All right. Great job, Anne. What round are we on? This is brilliant. On to the next one. Best day ever. Here we go again. The thing here is, I genuinely don't know what to expect. It could be anything. It's oh. crab. <laughs> That's, cu that's curry. Ooh, yeah, that is that's delicious curry. and spicy. We've also been given apparatus. Some nut or crack crackers. <laughs> oh, it's an apron. And I'm grateful we're, for this we're, with we're the white shirt. Get, we're going to get messy. Okay, right. Excellent. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
okay. all the textures there of this kind of ginger, garlic. Lemongrass. Not, not a super spicy. I think lemongrass, kaffir. Wow. Bok choy. It's also these tomato. There must be tomato oh. in it because I can see the tomato skins. Taste testing exotic fruits. We did this. Um, finger, finger limes. Oh, the little ones you squeeze out of the bubbles of. Citrus caviar. Do you know what? This is awesome and we haven't even got to the crab yet. That curry sauce. There's a lot going on. It's as, as fragrant as it is warming. Yeah. Oh, that is wonderful meat. On top of this wonderful fragrant spice, not particularly spicy, but deliciously spiced curry, you have this wonderful sweet meat. It's one of those dishes, it's why they give you the wet wipes and the aprons. Yeah. You're supposed to just get hands in and involved. It's absolutely delicious. I'm now fearful of picking up the cue card to find out what information we have on it. Ah, this is by Kircher Stone. So it is crab curry, simple as that. Whole Dungeness crab uh, curry. It has got finger limes, crispy shallots and garlic and served with cilantro or coriander flatbreads. I know Curtis Stone. So we're talking uh, Top Chef, Iron Chef, originally Australian, had a lot of time in London, oh! under Marco Pierre White, um, now LA. Tall, blonde, really hunky. That's him. That's him. Two restaurants in LA, both of which with Michelin stars and this is his oh. dish that he's representing here. The thing weird about this place is usually when you come to a restaurant, you expect like a certain style or theme of food. Every plate is so different. They're all signature dishes, but from different people. If you think about it, recently we've toppled over a billion video views on Not YouTube. Bad. Pretty awesome. Like you guys are phenomenal. You've been watching our stuff for well over a decade. And in that time, so much content that we've made hopefully look good and sexy on camera, but you've never been able to taste it. No, That's why this is so cool. Like, you watch it on the big screen. Can we Netflix, do one of these? Let's do one of these. Pop up. A sorted, a sorted bite. Speak to Netflix. So, I think someone like Curtis, who has been in the food and hospitality and restaurant world for so long, what he does now is a thing that is called hashtag commit to one initiative. So, every year he basically aligns to one charity. Oh, okay, puts a right. whole bunch of his, his time and resource and effort into giving back to one charity at a time. Some of those charities are farmer based, so that's yeah. kind of where the produce comes from that he's cooking with regularly. Yeah. Some of them are looking at um, youth groups and adoption and all sorts of positive wow. charities. Wow. And that's basically what amazing food and restauranting can do. Fancy oh. another? We are on a roll, yes, bring it on. I've been told I can't lower the cloche because I might squash it. You okay, well, would three, you be doing two, eyes or cloche first? Three, two, one, both. That, is, uh, that wouldn't have fit under the cloche. <laughs> Stand back, it's, it's a striking slice of cake with like gorgeous edible flowers around the outside. It's a honeycomb. Oh yeah, it's an actual piece of honeycomb. Yeah, great. This first cut is going to be magical. Oh, yes. Cheers. I'm guessing that's the clue, it's honey. I'm getting honey all the way through that. That is so... Floral and sweet. Whoever the chef is behind this must be good. This is indeed honey cake by Nadia Hussain. Oh, Bake Off! Off of Bake Off. So oh. we have we have a Brit amongst us. Yes. <laughs> Salted hazelnuts on the outside, yes. edible flowers, and yes to honeycomb, which we saw. So yeah, we know we know Nadia. Um British Bake Off winner. Best smile on TV. Like and you just want to give it a go. I've, we've shared events with her, like, yeah. we've been invited to events, but I don't think I've ever actually met her. Nadia, if you're watching, come on the show. Show us how to bake cakes like that. So this is from Nadia Bakes, uh -huh. um, which is now a show that's on Netflix. I think it started as a BBC show. Yeah, it did, I think, yeah. And it basically celebrates all things baking from biscuits and cakes uh, to celebration items. And I think this is very much in that showstopper. Yes. Oh, Bake Off style showstopper celebration. And I'm not surprised but she's also been voted in the 100 Most Influential Women by, by the BBC um, and well-deserved too because her, her cooking, her shows are amazing, as is this cake. Oh, wait a minute. Is this, is this, this is like the Oscars where they, they start playing you off. <laughs> Basically, people are coming in now and they're going, get out of here, finish your cake and bugger off. <laughs> they very kindly let us film here before they opened so that we could take this space and this thing. I feel like it's just open. Yeah. It's about to get busy. Play us out. I think what's amazing is we've had cocktails, we've had like the, the Japanese fried chicken, like a small bowl starter, pizzas. We've had so much incredible food and even the dessert, but they're all leaning in. <laughs> but they're all so different. 
Yeah. And I don't think an eight layered honey cake is the kind of thing <laughs> no, you'd expect no, on a dessert no. menu, something like this. But if you've seen it on a show and you, and want, you it, want to taste it, yeah. this is where you do it. Ready? Three, two, <laughs> one. one. Actual theatre at the table. What is that? Okay. Well, I say theatre, I mean like cinematography. That's the one. Yeah. Who would have made this? There's a divide down the middle. So you have what look like dead leaves down here versus vibrant leaves. You've got dark chocolate, white chocolate, strawberry and like little cereal things. So seeing as we're in a Netflix pop-up, what's Netflix's most famous show? Well, I, I think there's, there's dozens. No, but, They're pretty good at shows. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel they're one of the most famous and probably one of my favourites is Stranger Things. Oh! And like, you get the whole two worlds thing. Yeah, it's got to be. That is a demogorgon. It is the two scoops Sunday. So Ugh. half of it is the real world and half of it is the upside down side. Yeah. So the real world, Anglaise, white chocolate sauce, fruit, waffle cereal. It's, it's right. so playful. So here they're not highlighting a particular chef. It's a show. They're celebrating the show. Brilliant. And it is ice cream flavours inspired by fan favourite moments. USS, USS Butterscotch. Butterscotch. Yeah. Chocolate pudding with mint flair. Oh yeah. Pineapple upside down. Which one was that? Think of that. Go to the bottom. We also have some extra sauces and that was enough. And a mystery sauce. Oh my voice is gone. Ice cream sundaes are one of those desserts that are always targeted at kids. Yeah. But every adult wants one. Because also, that's what Strange Things is. Strange Things, Strange Things you think is a kid's show. But it's definitely not. I'm so glad we've done this. And like, it makes you wonder, could we do more of these sort of things? Like food that's been inspired by TV and film. Creating fictional food yeah, yeah. like this, or the kind of like celebrate like signature dishes mm. is something we've done a lot of, but never come to a place where you just no. have it course after course after course brought to you. It's pretty cool. If you know of other experiences that you want us to go and give a go, then comment down below and let us know where we should go try next. Because this is, this is fascinating stuff. It's exactly that. It's more than just a menu of fun items. It's an experience. And the chances are different people have watched different shows. And therefore, yeah. especially when you come as a group of friends, you'll get to taste different things. We've only tasted a handful of the stuff on the menu here. They've got loads of other stuff inspired by different chefs. But also comment down below, what other films, shows, TV experiences have you seen with food in it that we should somehow find a way of trying? Not Ed, we've been feeding you all day. This one's ours. <laughs> Pass the man a spoon. <laughs>